The access we have now to self-help material is impressive and overwhelming. I mean, where do you start? Videos flood our screens promising transformative insights and actionable advice to navigate life, but with all this content, it's crucial to discern between empowerment and toxicity. Having delved into a hundred self-help videos myself, I'm sharing my understanding navigating through the realms of inspiration, caution, and realization. The landscape of self-help videos can be organized into three categories, each offering a distinct perspective on personal growth and development. The advocates, the detractors, and the guides. The advocates are all about why you should delve into self-help resources such as books or seminars. The world of self-help offers you the learnings of thousands of others who have started their journey before you. People from all walks of lives, various circumstances, different world perspectives, and different needs all offer you their wisdom. You have a wealth of support and knowledge available to you, and books and seminars are just some. I think many of us do not find it common within our social circles, people who actually talk and share about self-help and tips. It often falls into each one of us to struggle with different things and to, it makes it hard to relate to others. That's why diving into self-help resources is great. You are able to find your match and your need. The second group is detractors. Why self-help is ruining your life. These videos try to open you up to noting that the more you immerse yourself in the world of self-help, the more you begin to rely on it as a crutch to feel good without making any actual positive change in your life. You get stuck in another situation than before. It's just now that you feel you're helping yourself. When you dive into the books or to the videos, the seminars, you're likely to start feeling guilty, blaming yourself, or start noticing how bad you have it compared to others. It's toxic, to be honest. And lastly, the guides. Creators who are showing you what works for them and an attempt to help you along your journey. There is absolutely no direct path to improving your life in a way that you want. It is an individual journey, but we have so many people who share similar experiences and offer their help. When you find a book or creator that you align and relate to, it's often likely that you'll have substantially more improvement for yourself. When you start off, I recommend looking for creators that suit you. They'll likely recommend books and resources that you will also find useful and you'll relate to more. For example, someone who wants to improve their romantic life maybe doesn't need to watch creators who focus on building a personal online business or finance, but rather find creators who emphasize how to feel more comfortable in social situations, how to manage your emotions, etc. While the attractiveness of self-help videos is undeniable, it's important to dissect the underlying messages by content creators, the subtle nuances shaping our perspectives and behaviors in profound ways. When you jump into self-help resources and videos, here are some negative things to watch out for. One type of video theme is saying, no one is coming to help. It's your responsibility and it's focused around guilt. And the second theme I notice are creators who say that your inner reality is your outer reality, which leads you to kind of have some blame. One narrative by certain creators is the notion of individual responsibility, and it's bordering on guilt. By asking viewers to take the sole ownership of their circumstances, these videos inadvertently induce feelings of inadequacy. It's not good, because we all start somewhere, and even after making progress, there still are areas we struggle with. Yes, the majority of the change you want to see will come from you, but that doesn't mean that no one else is coming to help you or support you through this. You need friends to support you, a network of acquaintances or mentors to teach you, romantic partners to give you reason why you fight so hard. You can't do it alone. It's a combination of taking responsibility and asking for help in the right places. Similarly, the mantra of Inner reality shaping outer reality can lead to a sense of self-blame among viewers. It's not anyone's fault, nor should anyone blame themselves for having a certain outlook on the world. Improving one's life circumstances in order to reach a desired outcome requires a lot of shifts in different areas of a person. One of the biggest being inner motivation. Instead of blaming a person's inner reality on what is causing them pain, it's time to let everyone know that it's the outer reality that is causing a person to feel stuck or hurt. And having the discipline to navigate negative emotions on the path to a better life is the key. Not just how you think, 
We need to change our environment and shift what's going on around us. We need to understand the motivation to help ourselves is taking action to change our environment. What we do each day, the words we speak, true empowerment, as I believe it, lies in striking a balance between introspection and environmental adaption, leveraging both to effectively create meaningful change. At the end of the day, self-help videos are just one tool in your personal development toolbox. It's great to soak up the wisdom and the inspiration that creators offer you, but don't forget to take everything with a grain of salt. Trust your instincts, take time to find what resonates with you, and remember that it's okay to take things one step at a time. After all, Rome was not built in a day, and neither is your personal growth. There's a few things I want you to be equipped with in order to focus on your personal growth, and you can start by watching this video next.